So recently I made a video about getting my new OLED TV because I couldn't find a Switch OLED, which that was kind of true, but not really. Anyway, I made a bad decision, a really bad decision. Welcome to Mike Text It Out. If you're new to the channel, I'm Mike, and this week I'm here to talk about stuff that I really don't want to talk about, but it's important for me to talk about it because I recommended doing this practice and I got burned by it. And that is buying things open box. I've had fairly good experiences with Best Buy. There've been a few times where it's been like stupid stuff has happened. Like I got a receiver in once open box and then half of it was crushed when I got it home. And I took it back and returned it. It was no big deal. So the few times where I've had issues, I've been able to return it. But with this OLED TV, it's just gone into a whole nother realm of stupidity. So if you watch the original video, I mentioned that it was listed as open box excellent, which means all the accessories are included, but it was actually missing the remote. So that was already an issue. And I was like, I'm going to address it with Best Buy. And I went through their chat and then they were like, oh, you need to go talk to the store. And then I haven't had a chance to go to the store yet. So that never got addressed. I was like, I need to get a partial refund because that's not in excellent condition. That was one thing. But, you know, after I got the remote and the TV was really good, I was fine with it. I was like, I'm just going to let it slide. I found out today that even though it came with a stand, it did not come with any screws, which makes sense because it's in the bags that come with the documentation that include the remote. And since that stuff was missing, I also didn't have any stand screws. And the reason that I needed the stand screws is because I already had to have this TV repaired. This is one of those things where I was like, wow, this is a really good deal. It's an LG OLED BX model from last year. As you got the two ports that are HDMI 2.1, it does 120 Hertz. I got the Xbox, I got the PS5. I really want this TV at $1,000.99. I thought it was a really good deal. The issue is the remote and the screws missing weren't the only things that they lied about with this TV. So a few weeks after I got the TV, I started having this issue where it was just black screen and I would still get audio. And the audio is coming through the receiver over arc, so it's over HDMI. So that tells me the TV is still getting power, it's just the picture's going up. And I know some people are gonna be like, oh, it's the device, you know, that's all I could find online was just basic troubleshooting, but it wasn't the device because the TV menus wouldn't come up at all. And I would turn the TV off and back on, and then I would get nothing. Sometimes power cycle in it worked, sometimes turning it off and on worked, but yeah, it would just do nothing. Like it would just stop working and then it would just randomly start working again. I was getting close to the end of the return period for the TV. So I had two options, which were return it and put it back in my compact Ford Fiesta and put my seat all the way up to the front, take it back to the store, which I really didn't want to do, or I could try to get it repaired. So in my moment of panic, this was the first dumb decision that I did. I went and bought the Geek Squad extended warranty. Not that the warranty's bad. I heard it's actually fine, but I shouldn't have bought the warranty as a panic thing because I was worried about you know, getting stuck with this TV and LG not covering it and I was running out of time. But that was an extra $150. So at this point, now this TV that I thought was a killer deal for $1,000.99 is now costing me around $1,150. And really, that's only $150 off from the C1 model. I could have got a brand new C1, which is a higher end model. And it's from this year for just $150 more at this point. So that was bad decision number one on my part. I'll admit it, like I made a dumb decision by buying that extended warranty instead of just taking it back and just getting a new TV at that point. So I waited a few more weeks. So I was like, now that I got the extended warranty, I'm, I'm cool. I didn't know what LG stance and open box was, so I didn't want to not have a warranty just in case. And since I was already having issues, I was like, I'd just rather have it. And the crazy thing is the TV only had like 90 hours used when I got it. So it was still like a fairly new TV. 90 hours isn't too bad. I finally caved, contacted LG first because I used to work for a company that dealt with TV repairs. So I go through the company first because if you have an extended warranty, typically the manufacturer's warranty is going to be first. If it's outside of that warranty, that's when your extended warranty kicks in. So went through LG first. Told them what was going on. I was like, I basically already did the troubleshooting. I explained it over chat and they were like, okay, cool, service. So after like a week, 
finally got a service technician out there today. I talked to him over the phone. I described what was going on. He didn't want to come out for the initial evaluation to see what was going on. To be honest, it was an issue that's hard to replicate because it happens randomly. So like we could be watching for 30 minutes, we'll be fine and no one will just go out. So he ordered a new power board and a new main board. So I had to wait for that to come in. So I literally just got that replaced today, which is Tuesday, the 23rd. So he just came out there today, had to pull the TV down, replace both of the boards. So, so far it's been fine. Today we've kind of ran it as long as we could to test it. So it's kind of one of those wait and see things. He said the next thing, if it's still not working right, would be the panel. But the point is, yes, TVs can have issues. And this is a fairly new TV, and I'm sure whatever's wrong with it was probably a manufacturer's defect. So I wouldn't be that mad about it or even buying this extended warranty if it wasn't for the fact that Best Buy was aware of this issue. And I found that out today because the funny thing is, when I realized I didn't have the stand screws because I was gonna put the TV on a stand because it's been mounted since we got it, I go in the box, this is double check, and then there's a piece of paper all the way at the bottom of the box I didn't notice when we, when we got it. This piece of paper was actually pretty interesting because it's actually a repair order. So let's go ahead and dox Best Buy, we're doxing them. I don't think doxing is a good thing. I probably shouldn't be doing it. So looking at this, they sent this TV off for repair because the TV will not sync with the LG remote, which makes sense why I didn't have a remote now. And the device would also blick to a black screen. I don't know what blick means, but maybe it's supposed to be blink. Doesn't matter. That's the issue we were experiencing. So they sent this off to repair where they said no issues were found. This TV was just purchased the September 11th. So this TV was purchased like a month before I bought it, which isn't too bad. But yeah, they, they apparently didn't find any issues. So they basically sent it back to the store and they put it back on sale as open box. So they knew that this was an issue. So I don't know how they do stuff for Geek Squad Repair because I'm not on the inside like that. I don't have the inside info, but it says the client information is the store. So I don't know if like, let's say if you bring a TV into the store for repair, when they send it off for repair, if they just put their own address as the client information since they're receiving the TV back anyway. That might be the case. I'm not sure if this was an actual customer's TV or if this was supposed to be a store model and they had issues with it. But either way, Best Buy was aware that this TV had issues. Either they knew that it had issues or a customer told them it had this issue and they put it back out as open box. My thing with open box is it's supposed to be just that, open box. Like a person brought something and then they returned it, but they returned it because they didn't want it. There was no issues with it. We just didn't, don't like this. We want to get something else. We returned it. That's open box to me. Refurbished is a little bit different. I generally don't buy refurbished from Best Buy and it's not because I don't trust it. Well, now I don't, but it's because the refurbished stuff is a little bit more expensive typically, but I think they felt like because they said there were no issues with it, they were just like, oh, we're just gonna list this as open box. So this exact same issue that I had with the TV was already here on this documentation, which is why I'm upset. Like. Come on, like this is really, it's really ridiculous. I am gonna to talk to the store about this. I'm being honest this time, I am, because I'm gonna need some of my money back because I just feel like at this point, being that I have this proof that they were aware of the issue and they sold me this TV anyway, saying that it's in excellent condition, there's no remote, I'm missing stand screws, I have to have it serviced after having it for a month, like, yeah, they're gonna pay me back. I apologize for recommending buying an open box TV. Now, if it's something cheaper, that's easy where you can buy it and you're saving like a bunch of money, like maybe if you're saving like 25% of the price or something like that, then yeah, buy open box, see if it's all good. Cause like I said, most of the warranty for open box stuff is usually the same as a manufacturer's warranty anyway, cause they view it as a new item. Like LG had no issues coming out and fixing my TV and not something they received that clearly said it was open box. It's risky, but it's a lot of the times better than buying refurbished as far as the warranty because you still get the full warranty. Depending on the company, most companies just warranty the same as a new product. So that's good and that's why I was an advocate for open box. But after this experience with Best Buy, I just don't know if I can trust them, especially with something this expensive and something that's this much of a pain to get fixed. Because I have to take it off the mount and put it back in the box because I didn't have a stand for it. Then after they fixed it, I had to remount it and all that stuff. And it's like this TV, like the top of it is paper thin and it's just like, it's a hassle. Like once you put up that TV and you have it all nice and stuff, you don't want to take it down all the time. So my new recommendation going forward is 
Yes, open box stuff can be great, but when we start getting to like a thousand dollar price point, then I would be like, eh, I wouldn't do it at that point. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm sorry, Best Buy, but this whole experience has just ruined my trust. If you are experiencing that issue, because I did see some people saying like on Reddit, there were like a few people that said that they were having this issue where you get no picture, no TV menus, but you're getting audio, it's probably gonna be a service thing. If you've already like power cycled it and factory reset it and drain the capacitors and everything that you can essentially do to do basic troubleshooting. So I'm bringing this to a conclusion, but if you watch this video and you found it helpful, that's, that's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> Make sure to give the video a like, tell a friend, tell a coworker, subscribe and hit the bell notification to get notified when I drop a video. And always remember to do at least two things at the same time. Peace.